Hello everybody, my name is Inspiraspero and welcome to my new Launchpad Project tutorial series. The goal of this series is to teach you guys how to make a Launchpad cover or a project from scratch on your own starting at the very beginning. This is going to be part one where I'll teach you guys how to set up your Launchpad to receive MIDI input and then also to create the drum racks to make it so that you can get MIDI output as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into it, no need to waste anyone's time. I opened up Ableton, all I did was I started a new live set, and as you can see right now I have my Launchpad plugged in and everything. And for those of you who have a Launchpad Pro or a Mark II, I'll be using my Pro, and so if you have either of those two Launchpads, you can follow along step for step. If you have a Launchpad S or a Mini, there will be small, small differences, but I will be sure to point them out if there's any, anything that's too significant. So if you're following along at home with a different launch pad, no need to worry, you should be good. I'll just let you know if there's anything you need to change. So now that I have started a new live set in Ableton, I'm gonna hit the tab button on my computer to go into this view. If you're new to Ableton, you can see that whenever you start a new live set, you start with two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. For now, all I'm gonna do is get rid of these audio tracks. I personally don't think I will need it, but if you ever want them, you can always add them back in by right clicking and you know insert audio track. The only reason you would ever need one is if you wanted to drag and drop your actual song in Ableton and listen to it. But for now, I'm gonna click on these audio tracks and then press delete. I pressed it twice just because I wanted to get rid of the two tracks. So now I'm left with a MIDI, uh, well, two MIDI tracks. This top one, I'm going to rename. On Mac, I did Command R. I believe on Windows, you could do Control R, I think is the equivalent. If not, you can right click and hit rename. I'm gonna rename this Samples. And what that means is I'm gonna make this uh, MIDI track, I'm gonna, I'm going to use remote just to explain. I'm going to use this MIDI track to be the actual sounds, my samples that I want to play. So for example, if I wanted to press this button, I could assign it to be a certain sound. So when I'm doing my actual cover, I can just make a series of buttons and orders, or in a specific order, so I can actually play my song. So the top one, I'm just going to call samples. I'm going to make it red, no real reason, I just kind of, I like differentiating the colors. And this second MIDI track, I'm going to rename that one also, and I'm going to call it Lights. Just because in most covers, you're going to want to have uh, some light effects to go along with it. Maybe you don't necessarily want to, that's fine, to each your own. But uh, I feel like I'm going to cover the basics from scratch, and if you want to know the lights, how to make the lights, then this is important too. So now that we have this set up, I need to get uh, input from my launch pad. So my launch pad is plugged in, and it's turned on. So on my top track where it says samples, I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna hit Launchpad Pro Output, Launchpad Pro Live Port. If you have the Mark II, choose the one that says Mark II. Choose the drop down menu that has your Launchpad selected in it. And for the Mark II and the Pro, this is important. If you have the Pro or the Mark II, you need to click this little drop down uh, box below the one we just did. And you need to select channel six. The reason why we're doing that is because, for whatever reason, by default, the Mark II and the Pro, the input channel, which you can see right here, is 6. And then on the Pro, there's a setup button on this top left. And you can see these are the channels. And this starts with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can see how this, is, this button's a little bit different than the rest. That means it's selected. For whatever reason, the default channel is 6. If you ever want to change it, you can just press these buttons. So now it's 7, 8. Um, I guess you can't use these, I'm not exactly certain. Just know that the default channel is six, okay? Now, if you have the S or the Mini, you will just wanna leave that as one. You don't wanna change that, otherwise you won't get input. All right, another thing we want to do is click this recording arm button right here, this, uh, this guy. If you don't click this, then Ableton won't know which Mini input to receive, if that makes any sense, because in theory you could have multiple MIDI controllers, like maybe a launch key or a, a launch pad, maybe two different launch pads. You could have a bunch of controllers plugged in and Ableton won't know which input to receive. So whichever track you arm, you're telling it, hey, I want to receive that input. And you'll focus on that one only. So 
since we're only working with one controller, we want to arm it so it knows that we're uh, using this launch pad. And you can see we're getting some light feedback already, which is essentially the controller uh, telling Ableton, hey, we're using this controller, or, you know, for a MIDI input, and Ableton's telling it back, okay, I got you, and sending MIDI output. So now we're going to go up to here, uh, over here on the left where it says instruments, and then once you click on that, you can see that there's an option called instrument rack. All we're going to do is drag and drop that onto our samples MIDI track. Now we go into drums, and here it should say drum rack. Drag and drop that inside of this instrument rack. So as for the lights, setting up the lights, again, we're going to want to uh, set up the MIDI input or and output, more importantly, sorry, for the Launchpad Pro. So I'm going to choose the same setting that I chose up here, and I'm going to hit channel 6 also. And I'm going to... I'm going to want to hit in. We're going to want to hit this in button, not auto. We're going to want to hit in, which means anytime we receive input from our arms track, which is this one, we'll also receive input from our lights. So they're linked together in a sense, which is what we want. And then we're going to go over here on the left where it says MIDI effects and drag a MIDI effect rack onto our lights. This is the point where we can add light effects and we'll, I'll explain that in depth later. So now I'm going to save my project just because I'd, I would hate to lose it. Yeah, this is fine. I'll save it in here and call it tutorial. So yeah, I think that'll do it for this tutorial video. Uh, hopefully that was short enough to keep your guys' attention, but also long enough to explain anything that was confusing in enough detail that you understood it. Anyways, hopefully that helped you. And the next tutorial parts, I'll continue on I'll talking about sampling and working with the lights, changing the chains and all that fun stuff. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.